Hey guys, I'm Sean Griffin, Executive Chef of John George Steakhouse at Aria. First and foremost, I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and practicing social distancing. I'd like to share some tips and techniques I use when cooking a steak, but first, let's wash our hands. All right, so hot water, as hot as you can stand. Soap, and we're gonna lather up a good 20 seconds. So we're gonna season, I'm using a filet mignon, or tenderloin of beef, ribeye, New York, uh, grass-fed, prime, uh, whatever your preference is, it all pretty much the same, uh, same applies. Uh, we season very simply at the restaurant, just salt and pepper. We use kosher salt, and we make sure we get that all around the steak. Correct pepper. We use a wood burning grill as well as uh, searing steaks at the restaurant. I'm going to show you how to sear a steak tonight. A little bit of oil. You want your pan to be smoking. So I'm going to turn that up just a little bit more before you put in your steak. So you get that nice caramelized crust. See a little bit of smoke. So whenever you're putting anything in hot oil, Always be careful, the hot oil has a tendency to splash and you don't want it to burn you. So I always push away and let it go. Nice sizzle. I'm gonna turn that heat up high. The goal here is to create a deep golden crust um, and that caramelization really adds flavor to the final product. So as the steak is cooking, a couple things that we that I feel make a great steak is uh, I look at the, the thickness of the steak. Um, an inch, inch and a half. I don't go anything less than that because I feel you can't get the proper temperature when you get the proper crust on the steak. If you're looking for like a medium rare steak and you have too thin of a steak, you're gonna get that nice crust but it's gonna be overcooked by the time you get that nice crust. Uh, thinner steaks tend to buckle a little bit when you cook them too. So I always look for like an inch, inch and a half as my, uh, as my guidelines for the thickness. You want to have a decent amount of oil in there just so that you're not sauteing in a dry pan. Another key ingredient uh, to a proper sear is the thicker the bottom of the pan, the better. Uh, if you have a cast iron pine pan, that's perfect. You see you got that nice deep golden color right there? That's what you're looking for. So here you can either put it in the oven or else you can turn down the flame to like medium low and just keep it going. Uh, for a medium rare steak, uh, this guy's gonna be probably about eight minutes, uh, give or take. Uh, thinner steak obviously is gonna be a lot quicker than that. Uh, if you're gonna put it in the oven, I'd say anywhere from 325 to 375 would be a good uh, temperature range to get the uh, desired effect. Uh, this guy right here is uh, called a compound butter. It's basically all those things incorporated in a butter. So thyme, uh, it's got some chives, some garlic, shallots, a little bit of Lee and Perrins, and uh, softened butter. I'll include this on the recipe, but it's a great way to finish off the steak or even chicken, uh, even fish. Uh, you can put it in the freezer once it's made, cut off a pad of it, and you're good to go for uh, a great meal. So by turning the heat down to medium low, you saw how fast that top side of the steak cooked with the high heat. The bottom side, it's getting nice and golden, but it's taking a little bit longer to get there. So I'll flip this another time. We wanna make sure we cook the top and the bottom um, equally. This is how we cook our Kobe beef at John George's and uh, I really like this technique because you get that really nice deep crust on the steak. The wood burning grill is also amazing. You get the uh, nuances of the smoke embedded in the beef. Uh, but this one's, uh, this one's also a favorite of mine. So our steak's been going for about seven minutes now and it feels pretty much right there, uh, about medium rare. Um, I usually test steaks by the touch, by the feel. Um, 
you can use a thermometer uh, or a simple technique I learned a long time ago is uh, if you relax your hand and put your finger right there, that's about a rare, medium, rare steak. The more you open your hand, the more it becomes medium. And then if you open your hand fully, that's about a well done. So basically, the more firm the steak is, the more cooked it is. So we're gonna pull the steak out of the pan and we're gonna let it rest. Out of all the tips I can give, this one would be the most important. Uh, of course, the quality of steak is, is a key and the way that you cook it, but you must let the steak rest. And the reason for that is you want those juices to kind of slow down and redistribute in the beef. So the end result, when you cut into it, the juices stay inside the beef instead of um, going all over the place. Uh, so we have this compound butter that I was talking about. And while the steak is resting, we're gonna put this on top. And as it rests, that butter's gonna melt and become kind of a sauce for the steak. All right guys, the steak has rested five minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and cut into it. That compound butter melted nicely on top. Oh wow. There is nothing wrong with that. I hope these tips come in handy next time you cook a steak. And uh, be safe out there. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, thank you for joining me in my kitchen.